Welcome to another edition of On the Couch with Lisa Sukdev. We continue with our electoral series, and in studio today, we have the esteemed MP Narayan Singh. Welcome, Narayan. It's Thank wonderful to have you. Thank you very much, and it's good to be here. We've just had a very short conversation off air about how many years you've been in public service. Won't you share that with us, please? <laughs> well, from 1969 to now. Wow. 50 plus years when I first served as a treasurer of my primary school, raising funds at that time at the state aided school. And from that time, civic associations, football associations, child welfare, FOSA, active politics, and in active politics from 1994. And how long have you been with the IFP now? Uh, th just over 30 years. 30 years. So if you can just simplify for our viewers, tell us a little bit about the IFP party manifesto but make it as simple and as brief as possible. It's not rocket science that's contained in the manifesto right. because we all know what the problems uh, we generally face in South Africa in a poverty, unemployment, lack of education. A step beyond, which I think other political parties have not done, is to offer solutions on how we're going to deal with those issues, particularly at local government level. I like the fact that you mentioned the word solution. So give me an example of what are the worst issues facing KZN right now and what are the IFP suggested solutions to those issues? One is uh, crime, say, uh, safety issues. Now one always thinks that safety issues are the preserve of the South African police services and, and people like that. If you run a municipality like Durban, you have a very, very large security force in the Metro Police. And, and even at every other municipality, you have a police force. They may not have uh, the same powers as South African police services, but they are there to protect the interests and, uh, and safety of the residents within that particular locality. And we don't think that they're being used uh, well enough, particularly in Durban. I mean, uh, I live in part of Durban, and, and you don't see the Metro Police being as active as they should be in, in you know, fighting crime, fighting gender-based violence, you know, taking up matters on behalf of people. It's always South African police services that's on the receiving end for, you know, not delivering uh, their product to us. But then how would the IFP resolve that problem? I think if we're talking at Teguini, I mean, they've been in the news many times about the lack of coordination within the Metro Police. Mm -hmm. They talk about overtime, they talk about lack of vehicles. You know, I remember, and I don't know if you can remember, a couple of years ago, they bought some water tankers that uh, cost millions of rand, you know, uh, to control crowds. Where were those tankers during the recent unrest? I mean, so, 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 so there are things that are not happening there, and there's always a clash between Metro Police and South African Police Services in terms of whose territory is, is, is it for them to act. We would make sure that the one thing we would do is get an active working metro police force or a police force in Ulundi or in any municipality that we that we're going to hope to run moving forward or in the districts because you need that. People need to know that there's visible policing in the areas where they reside and no one better than the police attached to that municipality. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love the fact that you mentioned the unrest and the looting. Tell me what is your view on it and what did the IFP do during that period? It was instigated by the Free Zuma campaign and in a number of areas that one would even drive now, you would see on, on walls, Free Zuma, hashtag Free Zuma, down with Cyril Ramaphosa, etc. And even when Zuma was to be arrested, uh, former President Zuma was to be arrested, I mean, members of his family and members of his organization said that, you know, you won't see the end of us and this is going to be the beginning of mayhem in the country. And they orchestrated this as far as we are concerned, but other people capitalized on it. You've got poor people that capitalized on it because they were offered, uh, you know, to go and take whatever you want. We have evidence that those that initiated this went there, broke the window panes or the glasses, opened the doors and, and told people, come. Then you had the building mafia, which is very prevalent here in Durban. When you have to put up a building, they will come along and they'll say, no, you can't build because we should be building, etc. You had the drug mafia involved. You had the taxi mafia involved. So a number of people got together and capitalized on this unrest situation, but under the guise of the Free Zuma campaign. And as the IFP, our, our uh, President Emeritus, Prince Wango Soto Butelezi, a statesman who had 70 years of public service and more without... Uh, 
any corruption without having put his finger in a cookie jar at any time, and that can be proven, you know. Uh, I mean, he was a first statesman to condemn the looting and the violence. And he also persuaded His Majesty the King, King uh, Mrs. Zulu, to go on air and appeal to the people of KwaZulu Natal in particular not to carry on with this kind of unrest and mayhem because it would affect them eventually, you know. And then we saw how it affected them uh, afterwards with, you know, no food and everything else, jobs, etc. So how has the IFP been communicating with their constituents in order to get votes? Well, we've been on the ground. We've been moving around. It's, it, it's been a bit difficult, and I, uh, I think it's because of the very short period that we have. Mm. Our reason for not uh, wanting to have the election now is that we, we, we believe that uh, the vaccination program had not gone far enough to give us herd immunity. And the fear of people contracting uh, you know, the virus now during election period is always there. And we took an example from what happened in India. Because India decided during the height of COVID to have elections and millions of people were infected and, and many, many, many more died. But anyway, it's history now that they said you have to have the elections on the 1st of November. And well, we, 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 we're doing the best we can through social media, print media, everything else. But, you know, uh, fighting an election and, and going to communities is not a, it, it's not an event. It's a process. Mm. And uh, people must see your programs and the way you operate as a political party and uh, wherever you govern over a period of time. I do not expect people, anybody, any voter to say, well, you know, uh, on Monday uh, the IFP or the ANC or any other party did X, so I'm going to vote for them. What have they done over a period of time? I like that. Yeah. Tell us and the rest of our viewers, what has the IFP done in the last two to three years and why should we as voters place a cross next to the party? During the unrest, like I said, Prince Mutalezi was the first one to condemn violence. And the, what we did, and I was personally involved, within a week I was in areas like Kwamashu Hostel, I was in areas like the Blasi Hostel, in Malagazi, etc talking to our African brothers and sisters. And we brought together communities, Indian and African communities, right here where we are in Effingham. Mm. We did exactly that. And we got people to start talking to each other and say, stop this kind of nonsense. And that helped. And there were thousands of people that we were addressing. Now, for the IFP, you know, we, we've been in government uh, for 10 years in KwaZulu. Uh, I, you would recall that I was MEC of many, many portfolios. And during that 10 years, and you can go back on record, there was no whiff of corruption uh, or maladministration. Uh, we had our challenges because every government would have its challenges, but not to the extent that the ruling party is having at this moment in time. So you know, we offer clean governance. We offer governance with honesty and integrity. We, we, we promote social cohesion as a party because our political party, like I'm 30 years in the party, we've got, we've got MPs, MPLs, Councillors, we've got a mayor in a in a 99% predominantly African black area called Mkanyaguda, and the mayor is Mayor Tim Mudley, uh, because our leader believes that you've got to put capable people, uh, you know, in, in in any position, and across the colour line, and many people think we're a Zulu party. We're a Zulu-based party. We're a kwazulu natal based party. The majority of our supporters are African, a black African. But we've got people of all colors in our party. So, so I'm appealing to people out there, you know, wherever you live, in chats with Phoenix and Klanga or Belito, uh, give us an opportunity. Give us an opportunity to show how we can lead with integrity in the municipalities. And also, we, we're not under the illusion, for example, in the Teguini, that we are going to be the majority party. But politics is about influence. Yes. You need to influence policies within the council so that policies, you know, will, will serve the people of the So that's something that uh, we want people to think And that's a critical about. point, because smaller parties don't have enough of a vote or representation to do, make changes at council level. So tell me honestly, the IFP, principally, who would you never align yourself with? And then who would you look at creating coalitions with? That's a very loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> a very but, a, but a very pertinent one. Yeah. Politics is about power, but whenever you enter into coalitions, it must be such that the 
communities or that the people within that locality are going to benefit from service delivery. Mm. Now, there are certain parties, I think, you know, on, on, on our mission and our value statement, we don't agree with them. But it does not mean that you cannot enter into a form of coalition so that the people benefit from governance. You see, every community, wherever they are, will go to elections on the 1st of November. After that, they expect political parties to be mature enough, if there is no outright majority, to sit around a table and say, OK, guys, what was your manifesto? What did you promise your people? What did you... And, and get all the manifestos together and, and find the common points. And then say, well, we can agree on this. But we can't agree on expropriation without compensation. With the EFF, I mean, th that's something that you park aside. But at the end of the day, there has to be a government. We cannot have a situation which is happening across the country. You can't pass budgets. You have five, six, ten meetings because you don't get the required majority. You're not doing a service to the people of that locality if you, you know, if, if you shun service delivery because you want power. And when you have a coalition, it shouldn't be about uh, what positions you're going to get. It should be how you can service the communities afterwards. If only it was as simple as that, Mr. Singh. Yeah. Mr. Singh, is there a parting point you'd like to share with our viewers, telling them why they should vote for the IFP? Well, uh, you know, all I can say is that the IFP is a party that's uh, tried and tested. We have been in government for a number of years. We ran the province of KwaZulu-Natal. We've got two MMCs in the city of Johannesburg, which are doing excellent work in coalition uh, with the ruling party. Uh, we've got a leader who's, who, you know, who's, who calls a spade a spade and not a shovel, a leader that promotes social cohesion. For the first time, we've got uh, 105 candidates contesting in the Tigwini. We've got candidates all over. And if we're talking about South Africans of Indian origin, we've even got mayors and councillors in Ladysmith that are sitting councillors, Richards Bay, and many areas. So, so we, we, we don't think that we are a Zulu party. We are a party that promotes social cohesion. We are a party that can deliver. And we are saying to you, give us a chance, trust us. We proved ourselves during the recent unrest as a party that took a stand on behalf of communities. And we call heroes those that unite communities. And I say all of you that want to unite communities and ensure that you get the best service delivery, then trust us as the IFB. That's On the Couch with Lisa Sukdev and a very big thank you to MP Naren Singh. Don't forget, elections on the 1st of November make your mark. Join us again tomorrow to hear from Minorities of South Africa leader, mayoral candidate Ronnie Viren.